In June, my sister and I took a trip to Iceland. In just two weeks, we booked a flight, shopped for gear, and we're on our way. Iceland was one of the most challenging trips I've had to plan. Maybe it was the short timeline I gave myself. Maybe I let the voices of others saying it's not safe for two girls to travel alone creep in. Or maybe it was the amount of unknowns I had to be okay with. I had expectations to document every moment. For me, for us, for our future kids to see one day. But there were so many different aspects I didn't consider. One, mainly being the weather, but also the amount of spontaneous adventure you needed in your soul. So for that reason, many moments weren't caught on record. Many memories will just stay memories. But I hope this little collage of moments excites you to see the world. I don't want to bore you with the nitty gritty. You can read it on the blog. But after landing, we took a free shuttle to pick up our pre-booked car rental. And within minutes of being outside the airport, I pulled over to enjoy the iconic purple flowers that later in the trip, I realized are literally everywhere. Had a main character moment and continued on our journey. Did some shopping, didn't make a list, rookie mistake, and then spent hours in the city, shopping, eating, and coffee sipping. First thing on our itinerary and a long time bucket list item was the Blue Lagoon. Walking in to the Blue Lagoon. The Blue Lagoon is what originally put Iceland on the map for me. But if you've done any research on Iceland, then I don't have to tell you that the Blue Lagoon is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what this country has to offer. For that exact reason, I'm glad this was our first stop. It was also nice to relax a bit after the flight, partake in face masks and wine, which was included in our package. It was the first moment since landing that I was like, holy ginger, we're actually in Iceland. Oh, and 10 out of 10 do not recommend dipping your hair in. Our hair is like straw. I heard people say that it would dry your hair out and I did not realize it. After the Blue Lagoon, oh my God, they're not kidding. It, it, it messes up your hair, even with their conditioner. And I was reading a blog and it was saying that it wasn't gonna come out for weeks. But the adventure continues. The next morning we had a lot of driving to do. And when I tell you that Iceland got more beautiful by the minute, I couldn't believe it. I kept getting out of the car wanting to photograph everything especially the moss. I was fascinated by the moss. So much so, we braved the wind just to get some photos. Well, not just photos. Just got us some fresh water for the day. Admits Iceland's rugged terrain where glaciers reign supreme, we grabbed crampons and ice axes for the first time. He's up there preparing the line for us so we can practice climbing up the ice. We had a really great guide and we're lucky for it because in addition to needing strength and skill, climbing also demands composure. And as newbies, I can say you really look to your guide in those moments. This was one of the biggest highlights of the trip. As you get older, firsts don't seem to come around as often. So I have to say sharing another first with my little sister, it was really special. From one icy quest to another, all geared up, ready to go kayaking. Thrills from the peak down to floating in a serene world of crystal blue. Icebergs may be born from glaciers, but they offer an experience in a space of their own. We paddled through the icy maze with nothing but seals as our company. And when we made it back to land, the adventure didn't stop there. We're at Diamond Beach. Right across the way was sand as dark as night, sparkling with crystal ice. If Mother Nature had a treasure, it would be Diamond Beach. Iceland's beauty knows no bounds, so aside from paid tours, you can enjoy this natural playground for little to nothing. One of my favorites being Hot Springs. This one was over an hour hike and surprisingly intense for a trail. 95 degrees, I would say. It's so hot, if not hotter. It's wild because you're freezing while hiking and then sweating once you're in the spring. Because of rain, we didn't spend much time at this one, although charming, it's not as great as other spots. And of course, the waterfalls. There's on estimate over 10,000 waterfalls in Iceland. Bring waterproof gear if you want to fully capture them because everything will get soaked. Night adventures. This is something special to experience. And us four are the only ones here. With nearly 24 hours of light, the sun barely sets before it rises again. This was the first and only sunset we saw our entire trip. So it's 2.30 a.m. We're heading to the secret pool. But it's hard to find. Not warm. I don't know what people are talking about. That is not warm. I saw the heater up there. 
and it looked nice and toasty, but it's, I don't know, it was just because it's 3 a.m. and uh, we're by ourselves, but it's freaking spooky, man. And outside it's only eight degrees Celsius. After being so cold the first half of our trip, it was crazy the temperature difference as we started heading back to the city. We didn't pack summer clothes, but it definitely felt like beach weather. Iceland is wild because there's so much beauty and uniqueness and it's all piled on top of each other. Everywhere you turn is a picturesque moment and it feels nearly impossible to take it all in. It's like super purple and rocky. We are not falling down this <laughs> It is very steep even though you can't really tell. If you're thinking about camping, just do it. I couldn't believe places like this could be campsites. This waterfall was literally our backyard for the night. Camping is the best way to fully immerse yourself with the best parts of Iceland. Although I'm an advocate for camping, it didn't go exactly as we had planned. We first set it up and it was great. The weather was great. We got in, we were like, wow, it's cozy. Yeah, two hours in, uh, I got freezing. Like so, so cold. So I told her I was hopping in the car and sleeping in the car. But good thing she did because about an hour or two after that, it started raining and our tent is waterproof and everything was like fine inside the tent. But I think it would have just been annoying, like the sound of the rain. And ever since that night, we stuck with sleeping in the car. Even though our tent and sleeping bag were made for the temperatures we were enduring, the car was more soundproof against the heavy winds and I could sleep better knowing I could lock us inside. And for our final stop. We haven't done many restaurants this trip, but this one was highly recommended. It's in like this little greenhouse. Actually, it's quite big and everything is based around tomatoes. Free the Mar is known for its innovative approach to greenhouse farming and its focus on sustainable organic agriculture. Three different varieties of tomatoes are cultivated in the greenhouse and food is served among the tomato plants. You can enjoy a variety of tomato themed dishes and even tomato based cocktails. Tomato ice cream. So there's green tomatoes and red tomatoes. It's actually really good. I thought it was going to be like a weird, like, just like tomato ice. <laughs> but it's like sweet. It's good. You even get a complimentary cup of hot coffee on your way out. What a cherry tomato on top to an incredible trip. Iceland, you will be missed.